always happens. But um, so I just basically uh, during the time I was in that band, I'd I'd met a lot of producers and different musicians and engineers and studios we'd been in, and just generally while my band was taking drugs and drinking, I was kind of making friends. I think looking back, it's, it sounds cheesy, but I think that's kind of what I was. I, I wasn't intentionally doing that because that sounds very contrived. But I think along the way, I'd met some nice people, and when the band broke up, I just literally kind of got in touch with everyone I'd met and let them know that I was kind of out there and <clears throat> you know if it, it felt really difficult because there was no kind of way of getting kind of let in and um, a, a real left turn was uh, the band I'd been in like I said was a heavy rock kind of funk crazy kind of musician band and an old friend of mine who was managing this girl pop group from Liverpool where I live uh, they call Atomic Kitten um, and really kind of like you know cheesy pop thing which I never even considered that I would do but I I found my old friend Martin and said listen if the girls ever do anything live I'd be really up for doing it and he said um, well I don't think you were that type of drummer and I said well I don't think I am well I said I just need an opportunity really to do it so cut a long story short the girls got a number one hit and um, Martin put my name forward to uh, a London based MD called Mike Stevens who was basically booked in to do the, uh, the to put a band together for Atomic Kid, and uh, I think Michael always tends to use his own people. Like, you know, people obviously do. They sort of trust people they know and their reputation, so they don't always take chances with new people. But thankfully, this manager said, "Well, listen, at least check out this local drummer. If he's not up to your standard, then by all means, get somebody else you know." And I sort of uh, did, did the sort of first day of kind of rehearsal with the with the girls and got the sort of got the gig, thankfully. So. And that was a really long version of that of that, uh, <laughs> of that question, but yeah. I had to get to that point. So I think basically what I'm trying to say is, I was so far away from doing any type of session drummer, I don't even to this day sort of consider myself like a session drummer, because that immediately makes me think of bow ties and white shirts. <laughs> and, they don't do, <laughs> and they don't do bow ties in my size. But um, somehow from this band that I was in, which was this crazy, toxic, this Liverpool mental band, I end up, you know, being on top of the pops doing this pop thing, but it taught me a lot of sensibility about drumming and, you know, I, I guess it was kind of, you know, it was it was a bit of luck, to be honest with you, as far as this manager put his neck on the line to, um, for me to meet this entry.